Well, good morning and praise the Lord. Thank God for another wonderful day. We want to say good morning to all of you who are joining us this morning by way of Facebook on this morning. We thank God for you being in the house virtually with us today as we give God praise for the wonderful things that he has done. We're uh, thankful for all the Mount Calvary members today who are sharing with us. And we want to say to the Mount Calvary Church family that we love you and that we miss our corporate fellowships, but we thank God that we have been able to communicate by way of modern technology as well um, as uh, socially when we see one another. And to um, the Facebook family in general who are watching us today, we thank, that, thank God that he has allowed your heart today to be led to worship with us here at the Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church live broadcast on this morning. We thank God for our partners um, on Facebook. Those of you who share the video on your various news feeds, we thank you for getting the word out. And we're going to pause now and give you a moment to do that now. We're going to take a moment and allow you to share this video on your various news feeds by share, there is a share button. If you don't know how to do that, there is a share button on your screen. You can push the share button, and what that does, it takes this broadcast and it places it on your news feed so everybody who you are Facebook friends with can have an opportunity to see this broadcast also. I thank God for those of you who are watching us from various cities and states. If you're from a various uh, if you're not from Texas, if you're from somewhere else, go ahead and type in your news feed who you are and what city and what state you're watching us from. We have people uh, from across this nation who watch this broadcast with us every Sunday, and we're thankful that God has given us uh, such an outreach to be able to reach uh, the various homes because we all need to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. All right, so we, um, if you're grateful this morning, come on, give God a heart praise this morning. If you are thankful for being in the land of the living one more time, press that heart button this morning. Amen. And um, let everyone know that you love the Lord. That heart on your screen means that you love God. Amen. Press that heart button. There's a button on your screen. You can just press those hearts and tell God, I love you today, Lord. I love you. I appreciate you because you are so worthy to be praised. Amen. All right. We're going to move forward in this worship experience. We thank God for salvation and we thank God for the reality of serving a true and a living God. And this morning, we want you to know that we're not going to quit. We're not going to throw in the towel because God is in our heart on this morning. I don't know what's waiting on me. In my future, I just don't know. I don't know what I'll be doing 10 years from now. I just don't know. But I believe that I'll be preaching and teaching God's holy word. It's in my heart. Come on, clap with me this morning. So it is in my heart. God put it on the inside. Listen. Sometimes my way gets dark and dreary. I can hardly find my way. My burdens get so heavy, sometimes I have sleepless nights and lonely days. But I believe if I keep holding on, that God will make me strong. Oh, it's in my heart. Come on, clap with me this morning. God put it on the inside of me. So it is in my heart. 
way down on the inside of me. Listen, you see, I've been preaching for a long, long time. I'm not going to give up. I got a made up mind. I've been lied on, cheated by my so called friends. If I had another chance, I'd do it all again. It's in my heart. Hey. It is in my heart. Yes, it is. See down in my inside me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's in my heart. Yes, it is. Some people ask me. Some people ask me. They say, Rev, how do you do it? How do you do it, Rev? How can you keep holding on? How can you keep holding on? You know when I tell a church, I look them dead in the eye and I tell them that the reason I do it, that the reason I do it, that the reason I do it, it's in my heart. How can you keep holding on in the midst of a pandemic? It's in, it's in my heart. It's in my heart. I tell you that I'll be serving the Lord. Amen. If it's in your heart this morning, come on, type in your news feed this morning. It is in my heart. Amen. That's the reason why we can keep serving God. Outside of the building, I know we want to be inside of the worship place and we're going to be back inside the worship place. But the reason why we can keep on holding on to God's unchanging hands because he is in our heart. Amen. Come on, type it in your news feed one, one more time. He is in my heart. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with us, if you will, um, to the Old Testament. Yeah, turn with us, if you will, to the Old Testament. And we're going to look today at a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, turn with us, if you will, to the book of Second Chronicles on today. Second Chronicles, uh, the seventh chapter, and we're considering in that seventh chapter of the book of Second Chronicles, we're going to begin our reading Amen. At verse number 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. And in the King James Version of the Bible it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then Will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will heal their land? Thus ends the reading of the text on this morning. This morning I'd like to share a word from you, with you, under this subject this morning. Our subject is tap out. Amen. Our subject is tap out. T-A-P, tap out. Amen. Come on, type it into your news feed this morning. Tap out. Tap out. <clears throat> this, um, this particular expression, some of you are familiar with this expression. If you are a person who follows mixed martial arts, or perhaps if you believe in the wrestling profession, if you watch uh, these particular type sports, then you are familiar with the phrase tap out. Yeah, tap out, what it means in essence, it happens when a competitor can't take it anymore. Once they've tried their best, 
once they have done all that they can do, once they have given their best effort and they cannot take it anymore, then the option that is available is they can tap out. Tap out means surrender. It means I give up. It means that I want this to be over. It means in essence I can't take it anymore. And this morning this particular introductory thought it is appropriate because that's the way I'm feeling right now. That's the way all of us ought to be feeling right now. In these times in which we are living, I got to be honest with you and say, those of you who are watching me this morning, I'm tired of coronavirus. If you're tired of coronavirus, come on, type it into your news feed this morning. I'm, I'm tired of coronavirus. Uh, if you can't spell coronavirus, type in, I'm tired of the Rona. Yeah, I'm tired of the Rona. I'm tired of hand sanitizer. Come on. Life has changed. Now you got to apply hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, when you push a door, when you go into the grocery store, hand sanitizer, uh, masks. Before you go outside now, you got to consciously ask yourself, do I have my mask? When you're around people, you, when you should be able to embrace people, now you got to wonder if they got the Rona or not. You, you got to stay away from, the, from individuals. I'm tired of this. The humanity of me is getting frustrated with these times. I'm tired of watching the news and every night, 10,000 new cases, 5,000 new cases, and people are dying everywhere. Loved ones who you know being infected. Is anybody out there tired? If you're tired this morning, type, be honest, and, 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 and this is not for the, for the uppity. Be honest and, and say today, I'm tired. I'm tired of our seniors, my mother, not being able to come out of our home for almost three months now having to watch her being frustrated. She told me this story the other day. Her great-grandchild came by the house and was running to her with open arms and they had to stop the baby because they did not want the baby to unknowingly transfer something to my mother. Tired of these circumstances. Yeah, not only that, my brothers and sisters, but we got other stuff going on, not just the Rona, but we got other things we're dealing with. Some of you are dealing with employment issues and some of you are dealing with emotional issues and some of you are dealing with family problems and we're reaching a moment where we have to be honest. We need a change. Oh yes, oh yes. We need a change. How many out there are ready for a change on this morning? How many here need a change? How many here need God? To do something. Oh, yes. We need God to do something in our lives. We need God to do something in our lives. Well, perhaps it's time for us to tap out. Maybe it's time for us to go through the motion and go through the requirements of letting God know we surrender. Oh, yes. we, we, we give up God. We, we've tried our own way. Now, God, we are tapping out. This text helps us this morning on learning how we can tap out. There'll be three things I'll be sharing with you in this message about how we can tap out. The first thing we'll be sharing with you out of this text, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14, we'll be sharing with you. Our first point will be the signs of the times. The signs of the times. And then we're going to move further in this text and we're going to talk about our second point, which will be God's prescription. God's prescription. And then finally, we'll close this message this morning. We're talking about our third point, which will be healing from the inside out. Healing from the inside out. This text this morning, it is um, in the jovial mood. It is 
uh, in the jovial mood. By jovial, I mean this is a happy moment in the text. Solomon, David's son, had been blessed by God to be able to build God a house. This was David's desire for many years. David uh, wanted to build God a house, but God said to David, you're not going to build it, but your descendant is going to build it. And now it has come to pass. And oh, what a wonderful edifice. Gold, precious jewels. The people are celebrating. They are, they are rejoicing at the wonderful things that God has done. They've accomplished many things. They started out with nothing. Uh, and to use a current expression, they started from the bottom and now they were there. In this jovial mood, in this jovial setting, God speaks to Solomon. He tells Solomon, Solomon, things are going real good right now. Everybody's happy and it's appropriately so. My house is a beautiful place. But then he tells Solomon, he tells him in verse number 13, the previous verse right before our text, he tells them that if things change, he tells them in verse 13, if, I, if, if, if something supernaturally happens to where God stops the rain, he says in verse 13, if I shut up heaven, that there be no more rain, if I command locusts to come and devour all your crops, if I send pestilence, if I send trouble among my people, our first point says, these are signs of the times. And this is God was telling Solomon, Solomon, when things are going well and you see things change, and they're in such a significant way that you reach, you reach your breaking point. And you say to yourself, I'm tired of no rain. I'm tired of the locusts devouring our crops. I'm tired, I'm tired of pestilence among the people. When you reach that moment in your society, God is saying, those are signs of the time. In other words, God was saying to Solomon, as long as you stay in my will, I'll bless you. But the moment you start moving out of my will and doing your own thing, things are going to change. I'm going to send locusts to devour your crops. I'm going to stop the rain from falling. I'm going to cause harm to happen among the people. But, I'm, but what I'm trying to do, Solomon, is I'm trying to get your attention. Signs of the times are designed to get the attention of mankind. I want to tell you, to all of you who are watching this morning, all the things that we're dealing with, there are signs of God trying to get the attention of our world. You know what? We've, we've, we've gotten so high to where we have put God on a back burner. Yes, my brothers and sisters, hurricanes did not get our attention. Tornadoes did not get our attention. So God is saying to us, maybe a little virus you can't see. Maybe something that will put you out your churches, put you off your job, put you in the hospital, take people out of your life. Maybe it will get your attention. These are signs of the time. I tell you, God is trying to tell us it's time to get back to God. Some of you, there's some people, my brothers and sisters, who before March of this year were not thinking about going to church, but now when I see people from time to time, they're asking me, Pastor, when are the doors going to open back up again? I believe God has gotten their attention. Yes, but there's some people, my brothers and sisters, that still have not surrendered. There's some people who still have not said, God, I tap out. 
Yes, God was telling Solomon, Solomon, I want you to know that as long as you stay in my will, I'll bless you. But when things start happening, the signs of the time are trying to get your attention to remind you it's time to turn back to God. America, it's time to go back to God. It's time to align ourselves back with the word of God. So what if prayer is not in school? You can't take prayer out of your home. Amen. It's not about what society does. It's about getting back that mentality that says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's time for us to realize and recognize there's a God that we have to serve. There's a God we have to glorify. It's time to realize that tomorrow is not promised. Signs of a time. The text says now, now that you're tired, now, now that you realize there needs to be a change, God says, I'm going to tell you how things can be made better. He moves in the verse number four. He moves in the verse 14. He tells him, he says, now, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face. God is giving them my second point. God is giving them his prescription. Yes, for the sickness of the times, for the trouble of our times, God says, here is how things can be made right. And for all of you who said today with me that you're tired of coronavirus, that you're tired of the condition of this world, here is how things can get better. Now I know he said he can heal the land. There are many people who are saying God heal the land. But before he can heal the land, he said, first, if my people God is saying, if those who proclaim to know me as their Lord and Savior, he's saying, if my people, number one, here's the prescription, you've got to humble yourself. All right. Humility means we've got to put God first in our lives. Bring ourselves down. Tap out. And let God be God in your life. Tap out. And say, Lord, have your way in me. Tap out and pray. Just the very fact that we pray, it is an action that, ex that expresses that we're not leaning on ourselves. We're leaning on God. So humble ourselves and pray. So step one of the prescription is we've got to step back and let God step up. Come on, type that into your news feed this morning. Come on, step back. And let God step up. Come on, step back and let God step up. Every morning when you wake up, start this tomorrow. Say, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. That's how you tap out. And he says, humble yourselves and pray. And then he says, seek my face. The prescription also calls for us to let our motivation be moved by pleasing God. Whatever you do, the Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, let it be done as unto the Lord. Yes, sir. yes brothers and sisters, what God is requiring us to do before he heals this land is we need to have an attitude that says that whatever we do, we're doing it and we're motivated by pleasing God. Oh, yes. I just want to please God. If you want to please God this morning, come on, type in your news feed. I just want to please God today. Oh, yes. Too many of us are worried about trying to please friends. Too many of us are trying to worry about trying to please uh, Michael and, Sh and Shawana them and, 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 and Laquan them. But you need to be concerned about this morning pleasing God. Man has no heaven or hell to put you in. Yes, we need to be seeking God's face. How can I be better in the eyesight of God? Yes, Tap out yes, sir. Yes, sir. and seek God. Surrender your
your life and try to be more like Jesus. Fulfill the title and the responsibility of the word Christian. Everybody want to use that word Christian like it's a rental car. Yeah, we try it on on Sunday morning and then park that thing on Monday morning. But what God is saying today, we need people, amen, to go all the way in with God. Come on, live your life for God. Come on, 99 will not do. You got to make 100 if you want to see Jesus Christ. So he says, seek my face. And then do what? Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from those things that are not right. Yeah. Talking about tapping out. Used to be a time, my brothers and sisters, people kept their stuff in the closet. They kept their wickedness in the closet. But now, they wear their wickedness. They brag about their wickedness. They brag about their sin. They want the whole world to know, yeah, I do it. And what you going to do about it? It reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah, the same attitude of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. They had the same mentality. Yeah, they came all the way out the closet. Everything that was wrong, they did in, in the eyes of God. And they looked up toward God and said to God, what are you going to do about it? I remember my pastor, Pastor Brown, used to always hit the conscience of our congregation by reminding our people that every time you turn your beer bottle up, that beer bottle is going right in the face of God. And that made some people start drinking when, he, when they thought about, you know what, God is watching me. But now we have a society that their minds and their hearts are so cold, they don't care if God is watching them. My Lord. But God is saying today, those people need to tap out and say to God, I'm going to turn from my wicked ways. I'm going to come out of my wickedness. Now, now this don't mean that everybody is perfect, but you know what? we got to be striving toward perfection. Yes, trying to do what's right. Trying to live our lives in the eyesight of God. we got to do, we got to make an attempt to live something that's called holy before God. Yes, he says, you got to do that. You got to turn from your wicked ways. And then he says, you know what? When you do that, when you tap out America, when you tap out Mount Calvary, when you tap out child of God, when you surrender, when you say, I'm tired of going through what I'm going through, God says, I'll hear. I'll hear. God says, I'm going to turn my ear toward your prayer. Yeah, it brings me to my final point this morning. Not only will God, not only will God, amen, bless us, but God will, he will heal our land. But this healing is going to be from the inside out. Those of you who are familiar with wounds and sickness, you know that before you see healing on the outside, healing has to take place on the inside. And God is saying, you know what, America, I'm going to heal your land. But you know what? First of all, I got to work on your inside. I got to get your heart right. I got to get your mind right. I got to get your will right. I, I, I got to work on you until you get healing from the inside. And God is saying, I'm tired of the outside religion. I need an inside relationship. Come on, type it into your news feed this morning. God is tired of an outside religion. He wants inside relationship. He's tired of building Christians. He's tired of sanctuary saints. He's tired of people who only live right when they're in the church house. But when you go to your house, you do a different thing. But I believe that after we come out of coronavirus, I believe that there are going to be some people who got a healing from the inside out. A healing from the inside. God said, I'm going to heal your land. I'm going to forgive your sin. And that, 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 that's, that's the problem. That's the problem with our world. Is that, we, that, that we're sin sick. We got wounds. We got sickness on the inside. We look good on the outside. But we're sinfully sick on the inside. Politicians are sinfully sick. Our world is sinfully sick. 
Oh yeah, we dress the outside up. But the inside is full of sin. And God is saying, I want to bring healing from the inside out. But we got to tap out, church. We got to tap out. So I'm wondering this morning, is there anybody out there that's going to tap out with me? Is there anybody out there this morning that's going to surrender your life to God? Come on, if you're going to surrender, come on, type into your news feed this morning. I'm tapping out. God, I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out. My home is tapping out. Come on, tell your children when you see them today. Say, child, see we see people acting crazy. Look at them and say, child, you need to tap out. And when they say, what you talking about? Tell them about this word you heard this morning. Tell them about that God is saying that the trouble will end if you just surrender. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Somebody out there today, you've been wondering about why your house tore up from the floor. Maybe God is saying to you, I'm trying to get you to tap out. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tapping out. Yeah, I'm a preacher. But with all this trouble going on and all, this, all these things going on, I had to go back to God. And say, God, if you find anything in me that's not right, God, show it to me. Help me deal with it. I want to be right. I want to be whole. I want to be, I want to be more like you. I repent, Jesus. Repentance is not just for sinners. It's also for saints. If you want things to get better, if we all want things to get better, everybody better repent. Because we all did something. That's not right in the eyesight of God. So I don't know who you are out there. I don't know what your position is. You might be a big dog. You might be a little dog. But God is saying to everybody, tap out. Trump, tap out. Abbott, tap out. Everybody in society need to tap out and get back to God. Because God has said, if my people would you call by my name, will open themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. God said he will forgive our sin. He will hear from heaven and he will heal our land. Thank God for this word this morning. There might be somebody out there this morning that's ready to tap out. Maybe you heard this message and maybe God's touched your heart and maybe the Holy Spirit is dealing with you right now and say, you know what? It's time for you to get right with God. Matter of fact, everybody, all y'all who watching me, everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody who's watching me right now need to pray this prayer. God, I'm sorry for all my sins, all my shortcomings, everything I've ever done wrong. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. We repent. We ask you for your forgiveness. Heal our land. And heal us. From the inside out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, clap your hands now. Give God some praise today. Because we all need healing. We all need God to do something special in our lives on the day. And I believe that God has sent this special word. This word was heavy on me this week. All week long, it was heavy on me that I needed to deliver, to, to deliver this word to God's people that it's time for us to tap out because we're tired. I'm growing weary with this thing that we're dealing with. And I, I, I'm ready for God to heal our land. I'm ready to come back to church. I'm ready to see my loved ones. I'm ready for my family to be, to be made whole. I'm ready to move past this. So whatever I got to do, I want to give my life back to God on today. Amen? Now come on, clap your hands one more time to give God some praise for this word on today. We thank God. Amen? We thank God today for all that he has done. And we hope that he's blessed your hearts on today. Now, I'm thankful today um, for this broadcast. I thank God for my lovely help me. Those of you who don't know, she's behind the scenes. She is my engineer. Amen. She is my engineer. She helps 
me on Sunday mornings to get this broadcast across. And um, she hasn't been on the broadcast, but today I want to ask my lovely wife, Lady Cynthia B. Smith, come on, baby, will you come up? Yeah, come on up, sweetie. And, um, and say something to the people today. Uh, amen. Y'all give her a hand wherever you're at on today. Give her a hand. God bless you. Good morning, Mount Calvary, and to everyone that's watching our broadcast today. Uh, it's a blessing to be here, and yes, I am tapping out because I want God to heal our land. I just thank God for being here, and I wanted to come on today to thank my church family and all of those who wish me a happy birthday and all the many blessings and gifts you all gave and sent to me. I just came on to say thank you because you didn't have to do it. We're going through trying times, but you with your sweet hearts just blessed me. And I wanted to come on today and say thank you. God bless each and every one of you. All right, thank you, baby. <laughs> I know she's getting a bunch of hearts. If you love my wife, come on, give her a bunch of hearts right now. Come on. Amen. She's a wonderful lady, wonderful woman of God. Now, a couple of anoint, a couple of announcements um, for those of you who uh, want to give. Um, today, there will be an opportunity for our church members to give. And all those who want to give, you can give between 3 and 4 o'clock p.m. on today. Um, the Moors will be here on today between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock at the church. And on tomorrow, Monday, between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock p.m., um, the Browns will be here uh, to receive offerings tomorrow between 5 and 6 p.m. on Monday. Now, all of you who are watching me have a chance to give. If you have a cash app and you've been blessed by this broadcast and you want to sow a seed into Mount Calvary Church, you can go on your cash app and look for... Um, the cash app dollar sign MCBC Orange. Amen. Dollar sign MCBC Orange. And you can give your offering right now. Amen. Dollar sign MCBC Orange. Amen. So convenient. I'm going to say it one more time. Dollar sign MCBC Orange. You can give right now. Amen. All right, um, and to our church members, we praise God that our 95th year church anniversary is coming up in the month of August. 95th year church anniversary is coming up in the month of August, and we still want to encourage our members to meet your obligation. Uh, whatever you uh, plan to give, we're asking everybody for a $95 offering. Um, you can still give that offering, amen, $95 offering. So please plan to do that for our 95th church anniversary in the month of August. Amen. So these are our announcements. And we thank God for your time today and joining us. I am Dr. John A. Smith, Jr., the pastor of the Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. We're thankful that you have been able to be with us on the day. And until the next time, we say God bless you and God keep you.